In the previous tutorial, we set out to create a web service and we started with a web application first. So we created a web application called TestMart. So the idea behind this web application is to create uh, a web service that returns product information for an e-commerce uh, application. So we created a web app, we created a simple JSP page, and we also created this class called product catalog, which had one method called get product categories. This method returned a hard coded set of strings, which were the product categories, books, music, and movies. Now, what we need to do now is to make this into a web service. So I want to create a web service called the product catalog service, which has an operation called get product categories. And it should return these three values again, but as a SOAP response to a SOAP request. So let's walk through the steps to convert this product catalog into a web service. So this is a bit of a complicated process, so pay close attention. First step, I'm going to call this as a web service by annotating it with at web service, okay? So the at web service is an annotation from javax.jws. So I import that. And this class is now annotated as a web service. Step two, well, there is actually no step two. We are actually done. This is all it takes to create a web service out of any Java class. All I need to do is annotate it as a web service. And that's it. I'm not kidding. Well, I was kidding when I said that it's a long, complicated process because it's not. It's just one annotation that's required to make this class as a web service. Well, there are a lot of things that are happening by default, and uh, we're gonna look at that a bit later, but at the bare minimum, all I need to do to create a web service is to have a class annotated with at web service. Now, if you still don't believe me, let's run this. I'm gonna deploy this on the web server. I'm gonna say run on server. So Glassfish does a lot of things behind the scenes, which we're gonna examine a bit later. But for now, all we need to worry about is if this web service gets deployed fine. Okay, so now there is no root page again, but uh, if we run the new file.jsp, we should be able to see that the application is loaded fine. Now, how do I access this web service now? Do I have to write a client for it, just like we did before? Not really. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna open up the admin console of the Glassfish server. So we know that the admin console is localhost colon 4848. Okay, now here's the admin console. Now I go to the applications link. This should show us all the applications that have been deployed. Now you see there is an application called TestMart that has been deployed, it is enabled. And you see here in the engines column, it says web services and web. So this is basically the nature of the application that's been deployed. So if it was just a web application, this would just say web. But since we have a class that's annotated with a web service, Glassfish knows that this is a web service application as well. So it lists web services as well. So I can click on this and I can see the details about the application. So you see here again, it's web services and web and uh, you can launch the web service or you can view the endpoint. You see here, there is a component called product catalog. That is the same class that we've annotated. So this is the product catalog component, which is a web service component. Now it says I can view the endpoint. If I click on it. Now we see here, there are two links over here. So one is the tester link and one is the visitor link. Visdl link, we already know, it has actually created the Visdl by default for us. So it's actually examined the web service and it's created the Visdl. So I click on this one and you see here, this is the Visdl for our web service. So yes, we have actually created a web service just by that one single annotation. So you see, we have all the things that a Visdl needs. You see the service tag over here says it's a product catalog service. Notice that it's actually appended the name service to the class name. So it's not, the service is not product catalog. The service is not this name. The service is product catalog service. It's actually appended 
the suffix server stored. And then you have a port called product catalog port. And the port has one operation, which is get product categories. So it is, it is pretty much a complete web service. Now, how do we test this? Do we have to write the client? We don't really have to write the client for it also. Uh, what Glassfish does is it provides us with a tester. So we, this is the second link that we saw. There is a tester link. It's actually a UI that Glassfish generates by default in order to test this web service. So I can click on this link here and uh, it shows me a page, which is the tester page. I can click on this button. If there were input parameters, it would have let me fill it up here using text boxes. But since this, uh, this doesn't take any input parameters, it is just one button here. I can click this button to actually test out the web service. When I click this, the web page sends a SOAP request, right? So this is the SOAP request and it gets a SOAP response back from our application that we have written. So you see here, there is a return tag. It returns the books returns music and returns movies. These are the three strings that we've hard coded. And this is the actual SOAP response from our web service. So you see here also the method returned a list, java.util.list, and it has three elements in it, books, music, and movies. So this is a very quick whirlwind tour of creating and uh, deploying a web service and also testing it using Glassfish. So things are very simple. All we needed was to create uh, you know, an annotation called web service on top of our um, class. Really, there's nothing else that's required. You could, if you want, also create a web method annotation. So basically, it's saying this is this this method is actually a web method. Okay, and this is again from um, Java extra JWS. But this is actually optional because once you annotate a class as a web service, it assumes that every public method in that class needs to be an operation on the web service. So it exposes all of them as separate operations of the web service. So this is the basics of how to create a web service. We're gonna look at more details about all the default stuff that's happening behind the scenes in the next tutorial. Thanks for watching.